In this video, I want to review multiplication with decimals. I'm going to go through the process, and I'm also going to show you how you could do a little estimating while you're doing these problems. In this first example, we have 4 and 5 tenths times 3. Now you're going to set it up uh, similar to the way that you would set up uh, just working with whole numbers. For instance, we could rewrite it as 5.5, excuse me, 4.5, and then having the multiplier 3 down below. Now at this point, you can go ahead and ignore the decimal point, and we'll come back to that when we're done with our multiplication. Also note that I'm not lining up the decimal points. With this 3, the decimal would ordinarily be after the 3, when we only have a single digit without any decimal numbers, we normally don't write the decimal number. But I just wanted you to notice that we're not lining up the decimal points like you would with addition or subtraction. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and multiply. 3 times 5 is 15. We're going to carry the 1. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. Now 4 and 5 tenths times 3 is not 135. And this is where we want to go back and count the decimal places that each factor contained. In this case, we have one decimal place. So because we have one decimal place in one of our factors, we're going to go ahead and move the decimal point from this location to the left. Now we have 13.5, or 13 and 5 tenths. And if I, do, if I had done a little estimation before I actually did the problem, I could have rounded this to the nearest whole number, which would have been 5, and 5 times 3 would give me 15. Now because I'm rounding up, I know my answer is going to be a little bit less than the 15. And sure enough, it is. Let's go ahead and do a couple more. Here we have 2 and 13 hundredths times 6. Now before I set it up vertically like I did the first one, I'm going to do a little estimating. If I round to the nearest whole number, this will uh, this will become 2. And if I multiply 2 by 6, I'm going to get 12. Now notice this number, 2 and 13 hundredths, is slightly bigger than the 2 that I rounded to. So I should expect that my answer would be slightly bigger than 12. Let's go ahead and do the math now. 2.13 times 6. 6 times 3 is 18. Carry the 1. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. And 6 times 2 is going to be 12. In this problem, you can see the factor has two decimal places. So I need to make sure that my answer also has the two decimal places. My answer is going to be 12 and 78 hundredths. And that's pretty close to what my estimate was going to be. Let's do a few more. In this problem, we're going to have a decimal point in each factor. Four, or excuse me, five and four tenths times eight tenths. I'm going to go ahead and do some estimating again. I'm going to round to the nearest whole number. In this case, I'm going to round down to 5. And this 8 tenths could be rounded to 1. 5 times, oops, 5 times 1 should give me 5. Now notice I rounded down to get this 5, and I rounded up to get this 1. So my answer should be pretty close to this 5. 
Let's go ahead and figure it out. Eight times four is 32. Carry the three. Eight times five is 40, plus three is 43. Hopefully you're kind of getting the hang. It's just like uh, working with whole numbers. Notice that these two factors each have a decimal point. There's one decimal place here and another in the second. I want to add those two decimal places together. So I'm going to move my decimal point from this position two places to the left. And I'm left with 4 and 32 hundredths which is close to the 5 that we, that we estimated. Let's go ahead and do one more. We've got 9 tenths times 13 hundredths. Now if we, est or if we do some rounding and estimating, if I round to the nearest whole number in this one, I would get a 1. But if we round to the nearest whole number, it looks like it's closer to zero than it is one. And one times zero is going to give me zero. Now I'm pretty sure my answer is not going to be zero. So I imagine it's going to be slightly bigger than zero. All right, let's go ahead and figure this out. Now notice this, the, the first factor has only one digit and the second factor has two. With multiplication, order does not matter. That's the commutative property. So you can reverse the order in which you write down your numbers. I'm going to write down the 13 hundredths first and then multiply that by the 9 tenths. We should come up with the same answer regardless of how you set it up. 3 times 9 is 27. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 2 is 11. Notice I have two decimal places on top and one on the bottom. 2 plus 1 is 3, so I'm going to move my decimal point over three places. And my answer is going to be 117 thousandths. Let's go and do another one. Let's say we have 1 and 4 tenths times 6 thousandths. 1 and 4 tenths times 6 thousandths. Now, as a quick estimate, I'm going to say this is going to be uh, close to zero again, just kind of like how the last one was close to zero. That's a really small number. Let's go and see what we get. And again, it doesn't matter which one you put first. I'm going to go ahead and put the 1.4 on top. So 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. And notice I have zeros. So I could put a 0, 0 times 4 is 0, and 0 times 1 is 0, and then come down the third row, 0 times 4 is 0, and 0 times 1 is 0. I'm going to add those up. Now you can put zeros in as placeholders, that's fine. And we're going to get 4, 8, 0, 0. Let's go ahead and look at all of, or count up our place values. We've got 1 here and 3 here. So 1 plus 3 is going to be 4. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. And so our answer is 84 ten thousandths. Remember that fourth digit is the ten thousandths place. Let's look at some numbers in which we're multiplying by a multiple of ten and see what happens.
let's say we have 3 tenths and we're going to multiply that by 1. Well, any number times 1 is going to be that number. So we are left with 3 tenths. What if we multiply 3 tenths by 10? Well, we could write it out if we're not sure. That's going to be 0, and 3 times 1 is 3. And because we have one decimal point, we're going to have, oops, excuse me, that's not supposed to be a 1. So we, we end up with 3.0, or 3, doesn't matter if you drop that 0, that's okay. Let's see what happens when we multiply 3, or excuse me, 3 tenths by 100. Again, if you're not sure, we can do the math. 100 times 3 tenths, it's going to be 0, 0, and 3. But because we only have one place value, notice our answer is going to be 30, or 30.0. What would happen if we multiplied 3 tenths by 1,000? Well, if you're guessing 300, you are correct. Or 300.0, that would be fine too. Notice that we've got a pattern here. Let's look at this. After we multiply by 1, when we start multiplying by uh, multiples of 10, if we look at the 0, where basically that's telling us, um, or I should say, the number of zeros that we have in our multiple of 10 will tell us how many places to move the decimal point to the right. In this number, we have one zero, and that's telling us we can move the decimal place over to the right one time, giving us three. Here we're multiplying by 100. So if we multiply, if we take that point 3 and move it two places to the right, we're left with 30, which is the case here. Again, in this case, 3 tenths times 1,000 means we're mo moving the decimal point three places. And that's going to give us 300. Okay. What if we have 3 tenths times 100,000? What would the answer be? looks like 30,000. Notice we don't have five zeros in our answer here, even though we had five zeros there. Those zeros are telling us how many places we're moving to the right. Okay, 